Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee. Since thou hast given him power over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I glorify thee on earth, having accomplished the work which thou gavest to me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name to the men whom thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. Now they know that everything that thou hast given me is from thee. For I have given them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me, for they are thine, all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to thee. Holy Father, keep them in thy name, which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, which thou hast given me. I have guarded them, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to thee, and these things I speak of the world, that they may have that my joy fulfilled in themselves. Right now, we are living in this time 
where we have many groups fighting for their rights. They should be. They should be fighting for their rights. They should be fighting for what they believe. And we have many people that have took a knee during the Pledge of Allegiance. We have had many people that are looting and rioting. We've had many people doing what they believe was right. What they believe was right. What I question is what they're doing is it right according to the eyes of the Almighty? Is the Lord our God approving of such actions? Is the Lord our God approving of rioting and burning down buildings? Is the Lord our God approving of police officers murdering innocent people? We have to ask these questions. Is what we're doing in this life really worthy of the Lord's notices. A couple weeks ago, I had spoken about Cain and Abel being a, one gave a worthy sacrifice and the other did not. Abel gave the worthy sacrifice and Cain did not give the worthy sacrifice. God respected Abel's sacrifice, but not Cain. It was something that we need to understand that when we speak, when we do something, we need to really ask ourselves, will God respect what I'm doing and what I've done? What I'm doing and what I've said? We need to ask these questions. As Christians, we need to reflect on everything that Jesus said and did. As a matter of fact, we need to reflect on it so much that many people called the saints lived and died by these precepts. They lived and died by what Jesus believed. This weekend, right after the ascension, on this Sunday, we celebrate the Council of Nicaea, the fathers that came together and they spoke about what was going on in the church. We had somebody named Arius who probably believed he was right. Whatever came to him, whatever voice spoke to him, he believed he was right. So much so that he began to teach it. So much so that he began to make an uprival between all the churches. I know if somebody comes in and speaks truth, there would not be discord among the churches, but there would be some sort of peace, especially in the early church, where they were finding out and exploring exactly who Jesus Christ was and what the tenets of the Orthodox faith were. But this guy came along and just created discord among everybody. So 318 men get together and they had a meeting about it. Now they could have just grabbed the guy and drawn and quartered him. They could have just destroyed him right out. That's what some people actually probably wanted to do. I know that's how sometimes we all feel when we see injustice and evil occurring. How many of us want, like the Jews wanted, Jesus to come and just wipe out all our adversaries? But that's not why Jesus came, and that's not why the church, the Christian church, was founded. Jesus founded what our faith and what we should believe is and will be throughout all time. What we believe in, what we do, what we say is important. Again, I hearken back to the gospel of Matthew. We are supposed to be lights of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. If you put a candle on a lampstand, you should not hide it underneath a bushel. But everything we do, everything we say should be for the glory of God so that our lights will be seen by all men. All people. All people. So they got together, these 318. Now the wisdom of the church is that we have a council of people get together, and if 318 people agree to something, then it's really hard for the enemy to make them confused. All of them anyway. There might have been a couple that agreed with Arius, but in the end, when the vote was made, 
318 people agreed that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had two natures. Holy man, holy God, one person. Right? We believe, and this is what we've passed down throughout the ages. And they had a council about it, and they made a statement that we recite every single Sunday called the Nicene Creed. Of course, it wasn't perfected right there at the beginning. There were still more councils along the way that tweaked and made work to what we now call the Nicene Creed. We need to remember why we pray. Every time we have liturgy, every time we have some sort of service, don't we pray for our bishops, our patriarchs, our priests, our clergy? Why? Why do we pray for them? We don't want them to lead us astray. It's important. A lot of times people have asked, you have it through two, three, four times in the service to pray for our bishops and pray for our clergy. Well, there should be more. There should be more. You don't want Arius to come out of the Orthodox Church. You don't want the agnostics to come out of the church. You don't want people to come out of the church that are going to spread lies and spread false rumors. However, Paul, even at that time, St. Paul at that time, what did he call them? As I'm leaving, remember that ravenous wolves will come. Are we seeing ravenous wolves now? We're seeing them all over the place. I guarantee some of those people that are doing those things, writing and everything else, some of them believe what they're doing is right. Some of them believe what they're doing is justice for that young man that was killed. Justice. But is it God's justice? Or is it man's justice that's prevailing? Is the voice of the world louder than the voice of Jesus Christ in our hearts? We need to remember why we pray. If we want to make a change, all as Christians, we have a blanket statement. Pray about it. But it's just not enough to pray about. It's not. Yes, in your daily prayers, we should be fighting against the coronavirus. We should be fighting against violence. We should be fighting to keep our church safe and our people safe. We should be praying for those things. But there comes a time where we have to decide, are we just going to make a mere mention of it in our prayers? Or are we going to go and pray and fast about it? How many people actually, when the coronavirus broke out, fasted all of Lent? To fight against the coronavirus. Specifically. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus teach us? Right? Jesus taught us when the disciples had some people, Oh Lord, we can't drive out this demon. What do we do? Oh no. And Jesus said, Be gone. He drove out the demon. And he tells the disciples, There are some demons that you cannot drive out except by what? Prayer and fasting. Make no mistake, what's going on, I can guarantee Satan down in the abyss is sitting at his throne, and make no doubt about it, he's got a throne down there. He's sitting in the throne, wringing his hands, going, I'm loving every minute of what's going on. Fear, anxiety, hatred, those are all the things that I love. You really want to step on the devil's neck? Love people that use you. You really want to put a thorn in the devil's side? Pray for the people who hurt you. That's what Jesus taught. How many times have we heard eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? I'm going to stand up and I'm going to kill somebody. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to protect what is mine. But that's not what Jesus taught. True, there are some times, as Solomon said, there is a time for war and a time for peace. There are times for that. If we don't have war, then tyrants would rise up and take over. There has to be some sort of war. And there has to be some sort of time where we have to stand up and go for peace. Jesus taught us to turn the other cheek. If somebody smacks us on the cheek, it's hard. If somebody comes up and just smacks me in the face, 
It's hard. I'm a big guy. If I want to, I could grab somebody by the throat and take them up off the ground and do a lot more than just slap them on the face. But it takes more to turn the other cheek. It takes more to stand up and pray. It takes more to do as Christ instructs us to do. When we stand before God, when we stand before God on our judgment day, and this is a question I ask myself all the time, is what I'm doing when I stand before God on judgment day, is what I'm doing, will I hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. And I, this has been ringing in my mind, and I think I've said it for three or four sermons in a row. Over and over again, I've been harping upon the same thing. But again, most people, just like Isaiah said, Oh Lord, who will believe my report? Out of all the people that we have in the churches, how many people actually call the priest and say, Father, I'm struggling. Father, I'm struggling. Father, I'm struggling. That's what they have in AA, right? You have a sponsor in AA. And when you start wrestling with those demons, you call your sponsor and you say, I am fighting these demons. I am about to fail. But how many people actually call their spiritual father or their priest and say, Father, I'm about to say something really stupid to my spouse, and I need a level head to talk about it. I'm about to do something really dumb. I'm about to go shoot up a school. I'm about to go and hurt somebody. I'm about to go rob a bank because I can't pay my bills. There are so many people out there that don't turn to God. And we have seen it over and over again, and we're seeing it now. Is Jesus in the midst of the people doing that violence? I would say no. Was Jesus in the midst of that police officer that had his knee on the back of that guy's neck? I would say no. But that's not for me to judge. I just had this conversation with somebody very important to me. Who am I to judge? I shouldn't judge those people that are doing those things. I can disagree with it. But those people are doing what they think is right. Some people are just riding on the curtails of the violence, but some people are actually believing that they're making a change. But truly, the only change that we can truthfully have is to let our light shine in the world. That is the change that the world needs. Look who they're attacking. Look who the world is attacking. Right? If the coronavirus, and I'm using the word if, if the coronavirus was some sort of conspiracy, who's it attacking? The elderly. How many elderly people still believe in God? A lot of them. They still believe in Jesus Christ. They still go to church, and our churches are filled mostly with elderly people. Let's eliminate the elderly. And if abortion is a conspiracy, now they're eliminating the people coming into the world that have a chance to change it. 22,000 abortions, 2 million abortions, what are we doing with better time? What are we doing? And is our lives glorifying God with everything that we do and say? Look at what's happening. Look at the state of the world and what are we doing about it. My task is to bring you, to call you forth for prayer. My task is to say, we need to pray more. We need to stand up and we need to go to the throne of God. But we not only need to approach the throne of God, we need to approach the throne of God with boldness. And we need to ask God with bold prayers to change this world. And if he doesn't change the world, then we need to pray that he changes the hearts of the people that call themselves Christians. Can you imagine if every single Christian that proclaims to be Christians went to the throne of God and had a fervent prayer of righteousness that was an acceptable incense to God. Every single one of us going to God, we could change the world. But there's only a couple, a handful of prayer warriors that are out there. But that's what the priests are there, not just Father Dimitri. That's hopefully what every priest is out there doing and saying, calling people to prayer. Remember, the priest is not the shepherd. 
The crease is just a ewe lamb with a bell around his neck. And leading you to the place of good food, to the good pastures, to the living water, to the bread of life. That is what our job is. And I try every single week to inspire everybody to rise up and make their hearts different. All of us, including myself, need to change our hearts and continue evolving into somebody that can look in the mirror and say, I see Jesus Christ reflected back. How many can honestly say that? How many can honestly say, going to the mirror, that they can look themselves dead in the eyes and say, there's Jesus right there. And if you can't say that, then I challenge you. Find a way. Find a way to get to that point in your life so you can see Jesus. Because if you can see Jesus in you, I guarantee other people will see him too. And the people that we think, they're never going to change. My husband, my, my wife is never going to change. My kids are never going to change. How can they ever change if the example, only example they have of Christianity is us? So let us glorify the Lord and remember the sacrifices that Jesus made, the prophets made, the evangelists made, and the church fathers made. They are the ones we are remembering today. And they're the ones that stood up and said, we can make a difference and we can crush this satanic belief that is being spread. So let us glorify and praise the Lord always for all that he has done in our lives. And as we prepare for Pentecost, we can remember that the Holy Spirit is within us. We celebrated that day that the Holy Spirit already came and dwelled and is dwelling within us. Let's use that Holy Spirit, that water party, raising people from the dead, causing people to, that are blind to see, people that are deaf to hear, the crippled to stand up and walk, that Holy Spirit, every one of us has that ability to drive out demons from anybody and every situation. So may the Lord glorify and let us glorify and praise the Lord always. Amen. 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 Let us all say with our whole soul.